All right, guys, this video is going to be a breakdown of one of these time of flight mass spec calculation questions involving kinetic energy. And this is for AQA, A level chem. Okay, this is unique to AQA. So let's jump into this. Now, there's a few different ways to solve these time of flight mass spec questions, right? However, it just depends on which variable they're asking you to solve. The overall principles are going to be exactly the same each time. I'm going to show you how to solve them right now. Okay, so get yourself a notebook out. Attempt this question. If you're brand new to atomic structure and you don't know what's going on, I'm going to teach you how to solve it. And then straight away, do your best to jump on to physics and math tutor or any other websites and go through some example practice questions. Okay, so let's jump into this. Freddie analyzes a sample of an unknown ion using TOF mass spec. The ions are accelerated to a kinetic energy of 7.48 times 10 to the minus 20 joules. That's our Ke variable. It takes one ion, 9.24 times 10 to the minus 4 seconds, to travel through the flight tube. And this flight tube has a length of 90 centimeters. Okay, and then it hits the detector. Use the equation Ke equals half mv squared to deduce the mass number. Okay, that is what we're looking for, the mass number of this ion. Okay, how are we going to do this, right? Let's look at what variables we've been given. All right, so we have our equation Ke equals half mv squared. All right, let's take off these one by one. So we've got Ke, right? That's done. Because we're looking for the mass number. Is the mass number the same thing as this? No, okay. M is mass, but we're looking for the mass number. Now, for the purposes of time of flight mass spec, you can assume that the mass number is just the same as the relative atomic mass, okay? And you can use all the equations associated with this or all the MR equations as well, okay? I'll get into what I mean in a minute, all right? Do we have our mass? No, we don't. So we don't know what our mass is. Do we have our velocity? No, we don't know what our velocity is. Now we're kind of screwed here because in order to rearrange this equation in some way to make one of these the subject, we need two of the three variables, but we only have one. So what do we have to do here? We have to use our second equation and this is not given to you, but it's really easy to remember it. And that's for velocity. This is the way I like to remember it, okay? The reason being the units for velocity is meters per second, right? I can remember what the variables are for this velocity equation based on the units. Meters is distance, okay? That is associated with the flight tube, okay? Distance. The bottom of the refraction, the denominator is seconds, which is time, okay? So velocity equals distance over time. Do we have our distance right here? Yes. Do we have our time? Yes. Okay, so we can calculate velocity, feed that into this expression right here, make mass the subject because we know what velocity is. The only other one we're going to have to need is mass because that's our unknown. Okay, and we can use our mass in order to calculate the MR, or as I should say, AR. Okay, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute, right? Now, let's rub this out and go through this, okay? So, one thing you'll notice straight off the bat is I said the units for velocity is meters per second, right? What is the units of our distance right here? Centimeters, okay? So you're gonna have to convert this into meters. In other words, 0 0.9 meters, easy maths, right? So let's work out our velocity first off. It's gonna be distance 0 0.90 divided by our seconds, which is 9.24 times 10, to the minus four, okay? We got our calculator up, let's put that in our calculator. 0 0.9 divided by 9.24 times 10 to the minus four, what does that give us? Uh, it gives us 974.02597, okay? And that is meters per second. So it's going pretty fast, but not that fast, okay, compared to other ions. The speed at which the ion travels or velocity is dependent on its mass, okay? So we can tell straight away that this is going to be a pretty heavy isotope or ion. 
based on the fact that its, it's velocity is not that high. Okay, so what do we do next? We know what the velocity is. So what we can do is rearrange this to make mass the subject. Okay, and I'll explain why that is. So what we're going to do is hopefully you guys are good at your rearranging abilities, right? I'm going to do this step by step just to explain it to you, but hopefully it's pretty clear what we need to do. It's going to be M V squared equals. We want to get rid of this half. Okay. So we're going to make it two K E just go. We times this by two times this by two to get rid of it. Okay. Next up, we want to divide by V squared just to get rid, rid of it from this side. Okay. So that's what we're going to do right here. Divide by V squared. Okay. So that's our expression for mass. Now I'm going to go back, sort of backtrack a little bit and say, why, why did we actually want to do this? Why did we want to make M the subject? Now, an important part of these mass spec calculations is good old Avogadro's constant. Okay. Avogadro's constant is 6.022 times 10 to the 23. All right. And the units for this for Avogadro's constant is going to be per mole. Okay. The number of something per mole. Okay. Now what we can do is we can look at our mass units, right? If we want to work out what the mass number is, and I said to you, okay, just assume that mass number is the same as MR or the same as AR, right? What you can do is you can say, okay, AR, what is the units of AR? Okay. The units of AR is grams per mole. Now, how am I going to reach this grams per mole? from the Avogadro's constant. I have to multiply it by something or divide it by something. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm going from per mole into grams per mole. So I can see that the unit here has to be multiplied by grams. In other words, grams is the unit of mass. Okay. So what I can simply do is I can simplify this expression down to be the atomic relative atomic mass equals mass times Avogadro's constant. Okay. Because we've got grams and we've got per mole that equals grams per mole. Okay. And this is how you would do use your units to calculate sort of missing steps in a calculation. All right. To solve missing steps, I should say. So all I'm going to do now is put this in my calculator, right? But you have to be very careful with units. Okay. I'll get onto that in a second, right? So let's get our calculator back on the screen and just do this right here. So we have two lots of kinetic energy, all right? What is our kinetic energy? 7.48 times 10 to the minus 20. Okay, bracket that up. And what's on the denominator? We have got V squared. Velocity, we worked it out to be 924.02597. Square that up equals... And this is 1.75 21175. And I'm going to leave it there times 10 to the minus 25. So this is our mass. Now, really important that you remember this. The standard units of mass within this equation for the TOF mass spec is what? Is it grams? No, it's kilograms. Okay. So what you're going to have to do is you're just going to have to convert the kilograms into grams. How do we do that? Now, when you're going from a bigger unit, so kilograms into a smaller unit, grams, you can times by a thousand. All right. If it was going the other way, you would divide by a thousand, which is the same thing as times 10 to the minus three. We're going this way. So I'm going to do times 10 to the three. I don't even have to do this in my calculator. I can just do times 10 to the minus 22 because I'm adding three to this. Okay. Standard form way to go. Let's now work out what our relative atomic mass is going to be, which is exactly the same as the mass number. You can assume it's the same as the mass number, but the mass number is going to be a whole number. Okay. Because it's just the number of protons and neutrons, but we can think of it and just assume that it's going to match this as a whole number. Okay. So remember I said earlier, we can say that our AR equals grams per mole, right? So it's going to be our grams, which we just converted right here. This is in grams. Let's put that there multiplied by Avogadro's constant. So it's going to be 1.75211175 times 10 to the minus 22. Bracket that up times 6.022 times 10 to the 23. Okay. 
I'm going to put this in your calculator. Let's do that right now. And see what we get. Okay, 1.752 1175 times 10 to the minus 22 multiplied by 6.022 times 10 to the 23. And that gives us an answer of 105 point five one three okay now this is our ar can we put that as our final answer no remember i said you have to put your mass number as a whole number because the mass number is just the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus right you can't have a point something of a proton or a neutron they have to be whole right so that would be our final answer at 106 done not too bad, okay? Just get comfortable with rearranging this equation as needed to whatever you need to make the subject. Get into the habit of rearranging this. Sometimes it's gonna be a bit more complicated where you don't know what D and T are and you have to input that directly into here. So it will just be half M D over T squared like that. You just input it in directly. And also get into the habit of using the equation M equals, uh, sorry, AR equals M times L or however you want to remember this one. Okay. If you don't remember it, you can use the units to calculate it just like I did in this video. Right. So we've got a cheeky one marker to round off the video here. Really easy one, but just to test your recall here, give the equation for the formation of a chromium plus ion from chromium atoms by electron impact ionization in a TOF mass spec. So state symbols for this are really important. Okay. Everything in a mass spectrometer is under a vacuum. Everything has to be gaseous, right? And we're starting with the chromium atoms. So we're gonna be starting chromium atoms gaseous, okay? Now, we're dealing with electron impact, not electrospray ionization, okay? So I'm gonna be doing electron impact where you've got your outer shell of electrons. It's hit with that electron gun and the electron goes off, okay? and you're left with your positively charged ion, okay? So the only way we need to represent that is just chromium plus gaseous plus electron, done. That is our one marker, super easy. You can just remember this with a flashcard or you can just remember the theory and just go with the flow. Hopefully this video helped you out guys. Best of luck in your exams, peace.